A few episodes back, I took Ms. Amy Adams to task a little bit, and I just want to say that I'm an equal opportunity offender. So today, I'm going to talk about a male actor who fails to excite me, Miles Teller. What do you think of this guy? I thought he was amazing in uh, The Spectacular Now and Whiplash. Those are the only two things I've seen him in. I thought that Whiplash was amazing, Mm -hmm. but I didn't think he was amazing. I thought he did a really good job. And he's really got that face and that demeanor of like, this is the innocent who's going to become corrupted. And we see that in uh, War Dogs as well, a movie that he did with Jonah Hill, Mm -hmm. another movie I also did not like. Who has the look of someone who is not innocent and will run into corruption. (laughs) There's just nothing really exciting about him. And if if I, if there's a movie starring Miles Teller, eh. You're not going away from the movie. Oh, Miles Teller. No, no, Like, it's just not the bait to pull you in. Exactly. For a while, I had Jonah Hill, but that was an active dislike of him. Yeah. But now I like him. Miles Teller. Mm. Life's too short to hate. I don't hate. I know. I'm not hating. I know. It's just like people you just don't want to hang out with. Oh, yeah, he's a really nice guy, but I would never call him. (laughs) (laughs) I've got a bunch of movies that I've never seen before. You don't know what they are. Every episode, I'm going to spring one on you. It might be good. It might be bad. We'll watch it and talk about it. Welcome to the basement. It's August here in the basement, and we're going to do a little something I like to call a look back in August, where we look back to previous episodes of this show for inspiration. Tonight, we are revisiting the work of a director that has been featured on this show, John Carpenter. And you better buckle up your boots, big boy, because right about now, there is some big trouble in Little China. <laughs> Yes! This is going to be a fun one. You may be wondering how it's even possible that I've never watched this movie before. Yes. When you're a teenage boy, as I was when this movie came out, you go through a little rebellious phase. Often you rebel against parents or authority figures, but when you're the youngest of four, like me, you also rebel against your siblings. My brother loved this movie. He'd go on and on about it, how much he loved it. And I thought to myself, you know what? I don't want to like what you like right now. Mm. In fact, I'm not even going to watch it. That'll show him. My kid sister got into Sonic Youth and I'm like, pass. It's like, <laughs> what was I thinking? I'm going to fix the situation tonight. And you get to join me. Oh, excellent. Well, that, that, that would be weird if you're like, get out. <laughs> Released in 1986, BTILC stars Kurt Russell, Kim Cattrall, and James Hong, an actor who you have spoken about on this show before. Yes, he is one of my favorite character actors. I kind of wish he was my grandfather. He's just so, so, so lovable. I just want to give him a hug. 20th Century Fox rushed Big Trouble into production so they could release it before the similarly themed Eddie Murphy vehicle, The Golden Child. Which I saw dozens of times when I was a kid, while I waited until my 30s to watch this one. Coincidentally, John Carpenter was also approached to direct that movie. Carpenter was beset by problems while making this movie, and after it was released, it only grossed a paltry $11 million against a projected $19 to $25 million budget. The experience disillusioned Carpenter, who vowed from then on to only make independent movies. Quoth he, I'm too old for that bullshit. (laughs) Today's gift comes not from me, but from Tona. Tona? This is something that she made back when she was a teenage goth. The movie we're watching tonight concerns evil spirits. And the best way to contact any spirit, evil or otherwise, is with this homemade Ouija board. Oh, this will be so fun to play with my child and invite (laughs) evil spirits into the house. Check Check that out. Check it out. It's got all kinds of juju in it. There's big trouble on the old other couch. Won't you join us as we watch the 80s action classic, Big Trouble in Little China? Egg Shen is talking to his lawyer. Because a few days ago, something weird happened in San Francisco's Chinatown. Half a city block explodes in a ball of green flame. Well, basically, it was magic. (laughs) This lawyer wants to know all about Jack Burton. You leave Jack alone, says Mr. Shen. The man's a hero. You weren't there. You don't know. Is this our first Sex in the City person on the show? <laughs> we go into the past and we meet Jack Burton. He's a long haul truck driver and he's got opinions and he's got maxims and he's got a sandwich to eat. I've been everywhere and I've done everything. In conclusion, rah, 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 rah. he's making a delivery to Chinatown. Hey, that little piggy went to market. Now, is this a mahjong party or a ping pong party? I can't tell. 
he's going to do some gambling with his buddy Wang. They gamble all night long, and Jack takes all of Wang's money. But I figure next time I'm... No! Not next time. Now. There'll be no next time. <laughs> You're going to see the judge right now. I need that money. I'll make you another bet. This knife cuts this ball in half. Nothing to double, Jack. Let's do it. The trick doesn't work, and now Wang owes Jack twice the amount of money. Wang says, I don't have that kind of money. Hey, I'm just a poor Chinese boy, you know? Yeah. I was born a poor Chinese <laughs> child. Jack says, you're coming with me. You're going to have to take me to the airport. My fiance is coming from Peking. Miao Lin. I mean, I picked up girls from everywhere else, but never from China. China. Sorry, I had to say it. And it pains me to say that. I Our had, funny president. I had to say that. They get to the airport. Jack sees this pretty blonde in the crowd. Whoa. Get that woman a cosmopolitan and something sassy to say and three best friends and brunch. Meow Lin is very attractive and she has green eyes. But these three badass guys show up. Hey, I'm gonna show you that I'm tough. You know, I'm gonna, you know, I'm gonna do it. Man. Tara! Rob Boom DA! They kidnap Meow Lin. Son of a bitch must pay. That should have been the title of the movie. Wang says, Jack, you gotta help me rescue her. And Jack says, fine. Oh, come on! Puma! Kids! Wang knows the guys who snatched her, and he knows where their turf is. They go into this narrow alley, and they encounter a funeral. Free Nelson Mandela. <laughs> and before they know it, they're right in the middle of a gang war. These guys are animals, Jack. Well, we're all animals. <laughs> There's all kinds of fighting that happens. Damn, that's cold-blooded. Murder. Guns and swords and staves. And Jack and Wang are trapped in the truck. Boys, boys, crazy boys, stay cool, boys. Got a rocket in your pocket? Be cooly cool, boys. You brought a board to a knee fight. Suddenly, these three guys appear out of nowhere. Somewhere, there's a lamp with a bare bulb right now. The real big trouble shows up. The three storms. And then this fourth guy shows up. He drives right through him. What? How the hell could such a thing happen? Huh? That man is Lopan. <laughs> this is the guy you want to be your grandfather. <laughs> yeah. I'm going home. Keep your money. This was an elaborate scheme by that kid, so he didn't have to pay. <laughs> Fast! Stop eating! for an extended period of time. Jack loses his truck. Later at the Chinese restaurant, he calls the insurance company to try and get a settlement. Well, I don't know my policy number. Just look under B-U-R-T-O-N, will you? B-U-R-T-O-N, 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 and Burton was his name, oh. We meet Wang's buddy, Eddie. And then Gracie Law shows up. You know how we know it's her? Don't panic, it's only me, Gracie Law. Yes. <laughs> I'm always poking my nose where it doesn't belong. And it like into exposed fan blades. Help me, okay? I got a great idea. Whoa! We need to go down to the White Tiger because that's the brothel where the sex slaves go to. Jack puts on a disguise. Boy, sure is raining cats and dogs. And he's gonna try and rescue her. They're gonna sell her into slavery. Before Jack can rescue her, those magical dudes show up and they steal her. Then there's the green explosion you heard about at the beginning of the movie. These men are the henchmen of Lopan. You mean the David Lopan that's chairman of the National Orient Bank and owns the Wing Kong Import-Export Trading Company, but who's so reclusive that no one's even laid eyes on this guy? Exposition successful. That's Margot. She's a journalist. I'm going now, alone if I have to. What? Where? It's pouring out. After everything that's happened, she's concerned about the rain. <laughs> Goat butts against the edge, and its horns become entangled is the weirdest fortune cookie I've ever gotten. Jack and Wang track down the magical dudes, and they sneak into where they live, and they're going to try and find them. And what you got here is two people dragging a third. Mao Yin. Just move this aside, and let's see what's behind it. Oh, I'm not seeing anything. Why don't you look behind this other... Oh, look, the wall is moving. Let's go inside and find out what's inside there. They get into the elevator, Suddenly, the elevator starts filling up with water. They know that we're here. And they find this horrible place that's all filled with corpses that have been drowned. Ooh, that's nasty. Wang and Jack are captured. Buddha, 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 Buddha. 
and they finally meet this Lopan, David Lopan. There are many mysteries, many unanswerable questions, even in a life as short as yours. Some people call me the folksy crypt keeper. <laughs> when David Lopan transforms into Lopan, he has no corporeal form because he's been cursed. He has to marry a green-eyed lady to break the curse, so that's why he's interested in Miao Lin. You can go off and rule the universe from beyond the grave. Indeed! <laughs> You seem to be one who know the difficulties between men and women, how seldom it works out. I guess what I'm trying to say is women be shopping. Am I right? Wang and Jack are blindfolded, strapped to wheelchairs, and taken to this metal room with a bunch of skeletons in it. Jack gets out of his wheelchair with the help of his handy boot knife. Gracie and Margot are also sneaking into this place, but they get gassed. <laughs> Now that's the episode of Sex and the City we didn't get to see. <laughs> Jack, here's somebody coming. It's time to escape. In walks Thunder, Lopan's right-hand man, and he is a badass. Jack and Wang escape, barely. Well, well, well. <laughs> Now our tap water is going to taste like wheelchair. I smell the blood of human beings. Find them, boil them until their flesh falls off. I will grind their bones to make my dim sum. Green eyes will make this immortal demon spirit truly an immortal. He'll become a corporeal form. That's how he can get run over by trucks, but he can't touch the ladies. They free all these people, these women who are trapped in these cages, and they all escape through the sewer. Check, I know where we are. We're in the poo-poo water. But as they're escaping, Gracie is caught by a monkey man. <laughs> right turn, Clyde. They get out to Egg Shen's tour bus. They drive away. Oh, wow, we made it. Hey, wait a minute, where's Gracie? Uh-oh. <laughs> and you know what? She's got green eyes. Lopan has a plan. I'm gonna marry both of them. And then I'm gonna sacrifice this one to get my mortality back. And then I'll have Miao Lin who I can enjoy earthly pleasures with. Pray your card to write. You live to talk about it. Catch me outside about it. What's going on here? Is this some kind of- Magic. The darkest magic. 98% cacao. They need to rescue the ladies. They're walking through all these underground catacombs. We just need to keep going past the goonies and we'll find Lopan. Past the Morlocks. The dwarves dug too deep. Release an ancient evil. Don't go there. And there are monsters. Monsters. Lopan is getting ready for his wedding and there's an elaborate ceremony that happens. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> You stole fizzy lifting drinks. You touched the ceiling, which now needs to be washed and sterilized so you get nothing. It's too bad he got so close to finding someone to take over his Chinese chocolate factory. <laughs> hi! 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 Bye! Miao Lin and Gracie are done up in ceremonial garb. Check me out. I'm like one of those balls that you find at Spencer Gifts. <laughs> Egg Shen also has this special drink the ultimate evil spirit. In my experience, the ultimate evil spirit is Southern Comfort. <laughs> <laughs> Worst hangover you could possibly get. It's, a, it's like a drink that's going to help them in battle. It's got tiger penis in it or something. I don't know. The guys drink it and they start to feel great. Now we will have five hours of energy. I got a very positive attitude about this. Good, me too. Yeah. Ricky J. That's who Egg Chen looks like. <laughs> Asian Ricky J. Yes. That's been bugging me this whole movie. What is that? Don't tell me. A guardian. You cannot ever defeat me, Brigsby Bear. Lo Pan's wedding is complete. He can touch things. He can look at blood and laugh at it. And those pesky guys come in and they disrupt his wedding. Ah! 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 There's a big fight scene. Shooting and fighting and running around. There's sword fights in midair. Ah! We've entered the Mortal Kombat phase of the movie. Round one. Fight! Arrow! <laughs> Arrow triangle! Ah, ah, damn it, I always mess up on this part. Well, I can't say it's the worst wedding I've ever been to. <laughs> and then he confronts Lopan. 
And with a tricky knife maneuver, ooh, right in the forehead, Jex killed Lopan. It's all in the reflexes. Thunder is very upset about this and he starts to inflate into a big ball. Ah! Oh my goiters. He's a garbage pail kid. <laughs> He's attained enlightenment. They got the ladies. They go into this garage area and Jack sees his truck. Whoa, what are the odds? They all pile in and drives them out of there. Back at the restaurant, everybody's in a great mood. Poor egg. Get thee a wife. Get thee a wife. <laughs> egg Shen says, I need a vacation. Bye-bye. Gracie's kind of smitten with Jack and she says, If you buy a bigger truck, one with a cozy little apartment in back, just big enough for two. Because I'm a lawyer and it would be good if I was also a truck driver lady. <laughs> Jack says, nope, I'm a loner. Bye-bye, Gracie. Bye-bye, little China. He thinks he's safely out of town. <laughs> More trouble. More trouble. What did you think? Oh, oh, wait a minute, Craig. I'm trying to communicate with the spirits here. But I, I need to know what you think of the movie. Lopan, talk to me. Are you in this room with us right now? Oh, thank God. Oh, yeah. He's a bad guy. He's a very bad guy. He's the villain of this movie. But you know what else he is? What? He's the MacGuffin. How so? He does nothing. There's all this hoo-ha about him coming back to life, and then he's instantly killed. But he's got a lot of stuff before that. This but is... he never does anything. It's all his henchmen. Well, this is how you get into power, man. It's all about management and, and delegating authority. He's the perfect villain for Jack Burton, the hero who also kind of does nothing. And it's been argued about him that he's not actually the hero of the movie, that Jack Burton is the sidekick. It's Wang and Shen who are doing all of the heavy lifting. I did get a bit annoyed at his constant complaining. He's just bitching and moaning the whole time. Kurt Russell is a better actor than Arnold Schwarzenegger. Oh, far better. But Arnold Schwarzenegger is a far better action star. Well, an action star and an actor aren't necessarily the same thing. So what are the qualities that an action star has that are different from the qualities that a good actor has? He has to have charisma. You have to believe that he is capable of doing all of this crazy stuff that he has to do. And he's not a great action figure in this movie. He keeps getting trapped. And if he is a hero, he's a buffoon hero. Definitely, yeah. yeah. Which is one of the things that makes this movie so interesting. Let's go back and talk about Lo Pan a little bit, specifically the actor James Hong. Now, you've seen him in a lot of stuff. Oh, yeah. What would you say is the quality that he has that makes him a successful actor? He has a strong, distinctive voice. He can make it so that you care and empathize about his characters. Even if you look at Lopin here, he there's certain moments where he's talking about how he just wants to be mortal and how he, he's sad that he can't touch things. You kind of feel for the guy. I think it's warmth. Oh yes, he's very warm. Yeah, yeah. and he can turn that into a you know a kind old grandfatherly fellow or the biggest villain in the universe. Yes. But it's that warmth that sells it, mm -hmm. either way. One thing that I can't figure out, why is Egg Shen talking to a lawyer in the beginning of the movie? At the end of the movie, he says, I'm going on vacation, bye. Evidently, he's going on vacation to talk to his lawyer. That's what I do on vacation. <laughs> this is not the best script in the world. I no. think we can safely say that. One of the big flaws of this movie is that the first act or so is so dialogue heavy. Mm -hmm. And the reason it's a flaw is because the dialogue's not very good. It's all up to you now, Jack. My destiny rests in your capable hands. You know what Walt Disney's final words were? What? He was writing a memo, and then he died in his office, and the memo was two words long. Kurt Russell. Kurt Russell was under contract with Disney Oh yeah, back when he was a child actor. Mm -hmm. I think he was the highest paid child actor ever at that point. Yeah. Possibly. I might just be making that up. Is Kurt Russell the most successful child actor turning into a grown-up career? Or is that Jodie Foster? Jodie Foster has two Oscars. I thought about this. Ooh, I wish you'd, you'd asked me this six months ago, because I was thinking about it, and I figured someone else out. Uh, Dean Stockwell? Ron Howard. Ron Howard. That's it. And the fact that his career went in stages. As yeah. 
child actor, teen, teen actor, yeah, and yeah. director. We have a nice little moment in the movie where Jack Burton goes undercover as a nerdish man. Yeah, I like that. The same thing happens in Blade Runner. Blade Runner, yeah. And before that, it happened in The Big Sleep, where Humphrey Bogart goes undercover as a nerd. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yes. They always come up with a very interesting voice. Cash, I guess. I mean, it's not deductible, is it? <laughs> God, I didn't know Bogart or Harrison <laughs> Ford could make that voice. Why don't they get more voice work? How do you think this movie does with race? I think it does okay. All of the Chinese guys on Kurt Russell's side, they're all heroes. Yeah. None of them are caricatures. And there's even the suggestion of interracial romance. Final thoughts on Big Trouble in Little China? My brother was right. Not that this is the greatest movie ever, but I should have watched it back in 1986. Yeah. I liked it now. I would have liked it a lot better then. I would have been trying to shoot laser beams out of my fingers all the time if I would have seen this back then. Lightning fingers. Can, can I have a little bit of that, Matt? Sure, I'll get right on that. All right. Big Trouble in Little China. I have finally watched it. And now, it's time for Seen It. Seen It. Today's Seen It theme is VHS, because our buddy Bobby sent us a big box of VHS tapes. So we're going to talk about some of them. These are the ones we've seen, because that's what Seen It is all about. First off, we have Dead Men Don't Wear Plaid. Seen It. Seen It. It's so inventive, even for back then, the early 80s. Just the, the idea of taking these, these old clips, creating a new story with them, and matching it up so well. It's so well done. Yes, it's uh, Steve Martin is the main character in the movie, and occasionally he'll run into these smaller characters who are... Humphrey Bogart, Burt Lancaster, and they'll just splice in scenes from In a Lonely Place or Double Indemnity or whatever. It's a comedy, film noir, parody... Yes. And it's also Steve Martin in his heyday. It also has one of my all-time favorite gags in it, and that is when Steve Martin makes his famous Cup of Joe. And he just does... It's basically a magic trick caught on film where he is pouring coffee into a pan, and it just goes on and on and on. (laughs) There can only be so much coffee in the bag. I'm just charmed by the magic trick of it all. Ridley Scott's The Duelists. What a movie. Ridley Scott's very first movie is my favorite Ridley Scott movie. Possibly the best debut of a director. How do you get this job as your first job? This is Harvey Keitel and Keith Carradine as these two guys who just can't let it go. Ends with one of my favorite shots in a movie. No pun intended. And the, one of the best lens flares in any movie. I think we've talked about this we on the show before. Yeah. Sure. Well, we're talking about it again because it's that good. The one problem I have with the Duelist is Keith Carradine, who's a fine actor, but he can never really shake that California like, kind of drawl that he has. Sure. Next up, we have The Sting. Yes, this is the best movie of 1973, according to the Oscars. I just found this matchbook today, and it says Zeitgeist. Yeah? The best picture is all about Zeitgeist. It's not about the best movie. It's not about the most uh, quality movie or most innovative movie. It could be any of those things, but Mm -hmm. it's all about Zeitgeist. It's all about the movie that taps into the consciousness of that year. And that's why so often we look back at old Best Picture winners and think, that one? Mm -hmm. Really? And there's nothing wrong with this thing. It's a very fun movie. One of the greatest bromances ever put on film. I think I saw this at a drive-in when I was very young, and I watched it again in my adult life. And I'd be damned if I can remember anything about it. I just remember that song. Yeah? When I was a kid, I thought that song was magical. I just couldn't get enough of it. Anytime Mm -hmm. I heard it. Because they were playing it on the radio back then. Yeah. That song had dueling banjos. They both really have something. (laughs) Here we have, and it doesn't have a cover, so I'll read it to you. Interview with a Vampire. Seen it. I've seen significant portions of it, but I feel as though I've seen enough. Right after I graduated from college, I was dating someone who lived a few hours away. She told me I had to go to the hospital last night. I fainted for some reason. She was fine, nothing wrong. And the doctor said, what were you doing when you fainted? And it's like, well, we were just watching Interview with a Vampire. The doctor's like, oh, that's probably what happened. No, it's not scary. First of all, we live in the 20th century at the time. We don't faint from being scared anymore. We're (laughs) modern women. Second of all, no one would faint from Interview with a Vampire. Right. (laughs) If you have a scene suggestion, why don't you leave it in the comments down below? And also be sure to check out our website, welcometothebasinshow.com. There are PayPal donation buttons on there. You can donate to support this show, a one-time donation or a rolling monthly donation. That's what Hana did. They write, keep doing what you're doing because you do it best. 
That's why we're the ones who do it. If you donate to support our show, you will hear your name shouted out on our unboxing show, which comes out this coming Friday. We've got mail that we open up and all kinds of surprises. We would love to have you watch that as well. Yes. We just experienced some big trouble in little China. And now, this. All has become strange. A world so unreal and yet at once so frightening. Worst penthouse forum letter ever. 